Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today what I want to do is look at the falling chain problem. So here's the kind of the statement. You have a chain that has a certain length L. Uh, the mass is uniformly distributed across the length of the chain and all I want to do is drop it. Now at the bottom of the chain or the, where the chain is landing, there is a scale there. And the question is pretty straightforward. What is the force of the scale acting on the chain as it's falling? All right, this type of problem falls under the category of continuous mass problems. These problems are a little bit more difficult when you first start looking at them. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna solve this problem using two methods, okay? Um, and you can compare the two, you can kind of get a feel of which one you like better. All right, like with all my videos, give it a thumbs up if you like what I do. Consider subscribing to my channel. All right, let's get started, folks. All right, so we're gonna start with method one. And method one, what? Uh, we're looking at here is the force of the scale acting on the chain. Okay, so the force of the scale, I'm going to write it down as to two terms. All right, the first term is going to be the force acting on the chain that is at rest. Okay, so I'll just call it F rest. All right, and that's simply a certain length of that chain that is not moving. So it's simply the weight of whatever this guy is. What is that weight? All right, that is going to be this guy. Okay, and then plus what else? Well, I'm gonna have to have one additional force because I have this link here that is approaching that scale and that link is moving at a certain speed, okay? Now the mass of this one particular uh, link, again, if I zoom in here, that link here has a certain length and the mass of this, uh, of this little link is simply going to be this density. We're gonna call this lambda and multiplied by the length of that link. Okay, so density multiplied by length equals to the mass. So we have to stop that link from moving, right? Because initially it has a lot of momentum and at the end it has a very little momentum, right? It comes to a rest. So we also have to add the force to stop uh, the one link. Okay, I'll call that F stop. So let's first look at our first term here, the force at rest. That is simply the weight of this entire segment right here. So this entire segment, if the chain has fallen a distance y over here, um, the weight is simply going to be the mass of the chain that is at rest multiplied by little g, and then plus uh, the force to stop that one link. All right, let's keep expanding this first term here. The mass that is at rest here is simply the density multiplied by the length. And the length of this whole chain that has dropped is simply the total length of y here that's it's fallen. So multiplied by g. Okay, so this is the first part. Now the second part, how are we gonna deal with f stop? So let's go ahead and look at that one separately. All right, so let's look closely now at f stop. And this is what we have. We have a link, one link, that is moving at some speed v. Okay, uh, the mass of that link is, we call it delta m. And it's simply the density multiplied by the distance or the length rather of that one particular link, link. All right, so this means that it initially has momentum and its final momentum of this link should be equal to zero because the link eventually stops. All right, so let's go ahead and put that, put that together. So how do you calculate the force acting to stop that one link? Well, all we have to do now is look at the change of momentum of that one link over the change in time. That's Newton's second law. And again, I'm not worried about the direction. I know the force of the scale to stop it has to point up. All right, so if you expand this change of momentum, well, guess what you get? You get P final minus P initial over the change in time. All right, and P final, we just said was going to be equal to zero because it goes to a stop. So we're left with basically, again, if you take don't worry about the direction. We know the direction here. It has to be opposite of that momentum, right? The link is falling down. The momentum is down, but the force has to be up. All right, so our last thing then is simply, what is this initial momentum over the change in time? All right, so we substitute, well, what is the momentum? It's simply the mass of the object. In this case, it's only a little bit of mass, right? Um, multiplied by the velocity or by the speed, right? Divided by the change in time. Okay, now look at our expression we have here for delta m. Delta m, I could substitute this guy into my expression here for f stop. So we're going to take this one step further. So f stop is going to be, instead of delta m over here, I'm going to write it as uh, the density multiplied by the little bit of length divided by the change in time and multiplied by the speed. 
Now, if you have a look at this term right here, the second term here, what does this look like? Delta Y over Delta T. This is also the speed of that particular link that you're looking at. So at the end, F stop kind of looks like this. It's the uh, linear density of the chain. And this becomes V multiplied by another V, so it's V squared. So let's now substitute that into the force of the scale. So my final expression here, and I'm going to try to simplify this in a minute, but it's y, no, sorry, lambda y multiplied by g, and f stop now simply becomes lambda multiplied by v squared. All right, I'm going to call this equation one. Now we're going to try to simplify this a little bit because the speed of each individual link depends on how far it's fallen. Okay, so I'm going to try to simplify this expression using conservation of energy. Let's go on the next page and do that. All right, now we need to find what the speed, we're not trying to simplify this expression a little bit, um, the speed of that chain link, the one particular one that I was looking at, uh, after it's fallen a certain distance y, all right? Every link so far has fallen the same distance, and this whole chain is basically falling at the same speed. It has to fall at the same speed, otherwise the chain is getting longer or shorter, and that's really not what's going on. So all you have to do here is just use conservation of energy, so we have that the change in kinetic energy plus the change of potential energy should be equal to zero. Okay, um, so my initial kinetic energy um, is zero because I just started from rest. And u final minus u initial should be equal to zero. So let's simplify this expression a little bit. Um, let's say the uh, initial was, or sorry, the final is zero. So at the end, all we have to do here is just do my final kinetic energy should be equal to the initial gravitational potential energy. And all I have here is uh, the mass. Uh, the mass is, um, let's call it delta M. I'm only looking at one link multiplied by little g. And that initial height here, I was at certainly a height y above this point, right? Because I've fallen a certain height y. All right, my final kinetic energy is 1 half the mass that I'm looking at, any link, it doesn't matter which one, they all have to have the same speed, and they all have the same final speed. All right, so using conservation of energy, you have to have an expression like this. So what's nice about this is it automatically introduces a V squared, which is exactly what I have over here in that expression. So let's go ahead here and just simplify the math a little bit. I bring the two next door, and what I'm left with is that V squared equals to two multiplied by g, multiplied by how far did it fall? All right, you could take the square root if I was only looking for v, but it's really v squared that I want to substitute here in my expression for the force of the scale acting on the chain. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, so we go ahead and f scale. The first term, I'll leave it as is. Um, lambda, y multiplied by little g, plus the density, and now v squared, look at here. It's 2g multiplied by y. These are the exact same terms, except one is double what the other one is. So at the end, all you end up getting is three times that density uh, multiplied by little g and multiplied by how far uh, the chain has fallen. All right, let me just make a little bit of room here and let's have a look at this expression a little bit more. All right, what is the maximum force that I could have? What's the maximum value down here? Well, think about it. Um, when is the y equal to the maximum value? Y is when this whole chain has basically fallen, right? When you have y equals to the total length of the chain, right, you're hitting that last link is going to hit the scale. So that is when y equals to L. Well, let's look at our expression here. What do we get for the force of the scale uh, acting on the chain? Well, we're gonna get three times uh, the density multiplied by little g. Now my y value is simply the total length of that chain. Now if you substitute the values of that density, this is what we get. We get three times the total mass divided by the total length, little g multiplied by the length. Look, look what happens here. The lengths cancel out. And we're left with now the kind of the maximum force that you're going to get of the scale acting on the chain is right when that last link hits it and you get three times mg, right? This is three times the weight of the chain, right? The weight of the chain is simply mass times little g, but we get a force that's equal to three times that value, right? Quite remarkable, right? All right, let's go look at a different method to solve the same problem. We'll see what we get. All right, so this is now method two. So method two, what we have to do is we consider the entire chain, all right? 
So consider uh, entire chain, and we're going to look at the forces acting on the entire chain. That looks pretty straightforward. Now, although there's a piece that's on the scale right now, and there's a piece that is falling, consider the entire, scale, uh, the entire chain. So I'm going to put it all together here as a system. All right, if you apply Newton's second law to this, it says that the net force acting on that entire chain should be equal to the change of momentum of the entire chain over del delta T. All right, that's our definition. Now, there are only two forces acting on this chain, right? Regardless of where the chain is, there's gravity acting down. If you did a free body diagram, you would say there's uh, mg acting down, and then there's going to be a force of the scale acting on the chain. That's it. These are the two forces. So let's write down the net force. So here we have force of the scale minus the force of gravity. Now, instead of mass, I'm just going to write it as the density multiplied by the total length. That's the mass multiplied by little g. That there must equal to the change of momentum over the change in time. All right, so far so good. That's pretty straightforward. Now, let's think about the momentum of the chain here in this particular snapshot. So first of all, we only have a certain segment of the chain that is moving, right? And the length of this segment is simply going to be the total length minus how far it's fallen, right? This is kind of uh, the length of this segment. Let's call it uh, L prime, okay? So what is the mass of this guy? Well, the mass is going to be that length multiplied by the density. So let me go ahead and write that. So the, the momentum right now is going to be the density multiplied by L prime, or actually I could just substitute it in right away. I think that's okay. So that's the mass of this entire segment that is falling, and it's falling at a certain rate or at a speed V. All right, now let's keep in mind that right now that this here is down, okay, because it is falling. So in order to substitute it into Newton's second law up here, all right, let's call this equation one, we have to differentiate this with respect to time. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so how do you do that? So you differentiate the momentum relative to time, or with respect to time, rather. The first term is a constant, so forget about that. Now keep in mind here, you really have two terms, right? So we're going to use the chain rule in order to find this. So let's differentiate the first term. The first term is simply um, negative y. If I differentiate that with respect to time, I get dy over dt, and I'm still left with v over there. All right, now what's the next term? I differentiate v now relative to time, and I keep the first term the exact same, right? So plus lambda, l minus y, and dv over dt. Okay, so this is uh, the second term right here. Okay, so now we have to simplify this a little bit, right? We have two terms that look rather complicated, but let's have a look at these on how we could simplify them. So the second term is one that's pretty straightforward, right? What does this look like here? dv over dt. That is an acceleration term. And right now, this term is simply accelerating due to gravity, right? So that term is simply minus g. And I put minus just to indicate the direction of dv dt, right? All right. And now what about the other term? Let's have a look at this term right here. What is this? dy over dt. Uh, dy over dt simply looks like a velocity term, right? That's the velocity in the vertical direction. However, we know that that there has to be also negative, right? Because it's going down. Okay, so again, I'm actually taking the signs into consideration here because I have to be a little bit careful when I substitute things in. So let's go ahead now and keep going with f scale. So we're going to substitute both of these expressions into our right-hand side of Newton's second law right here. So we should have F scale uh, minus uh, the total weight uh, has to be equal to the change of momentum. So the first term here, let's be a little bit careful. Once I substitute dy dt, which is the red equation right here, notice here I'm going to get lambda and I'm going to get V multiplied by V. That's V squared. And what about the second term? The second term will become uh, minus uh, lambda L minus Y. And that becomes minus little g, right? So the negative sign I stuck to the front right here, and I have little g right here. All right, we're going to keep going. Actually, if you have a look at this, if I multiply through this lambda, uh, we can actually simplify that. Okay, we're going to have minus lambda L multiplied by g. And then the second term here looks like plus lambda 
y multiplied by little g. And this equals everything here on the left-hand side. I haven't done anything. Now notice here we have the exact same term. So this here can cancel out, right? The total weight of that chain can cancel out. All right, and I'm left with one final expression for F scale. All right, so F scale equals to lambda V squared plus uh, lambda. I'll just uh, reorganize the letters right here. Now, if you have a look at that previous expression, this is exactly what we had previously. And we used conservation of energy to show that V squared was equal to 2G multiplied by the distance that the chain has fallen at that instant. So again, you can use the exact same expression, and what you're going to get here is going to be 3 times lambda multiplied by G multiplied by Y. Okay, that is F scale as a function of time. All right, let's go to the next page and just look at this expression here. I have the force, but let's look at the expression for force as a function of time as it's fallen. All right, well, let's look at it when it's falling now. What we have is this section of chain that is simply in free fall. So this distance y, again, it's just the distance here. Um, if it started from rest, there's no initial velocity. So all you have here is one half gt squared for this distance here from the point, the top point of release to the top link right here. Right? If I now substitute that in over here, think about what we have now for the force of the scale as a function of time. Right? We're going to have a 3 lambda multiplied by little g. Now I substitute the value of y. So I have 1 half a little g t squared. All right, you can put everything together. We get 3 halves a lambda little g squared t squared. Right? This is the force of the scale as a function of time. So at time zero, the scale reads zero, right? Because it's simply above the scale. And eventually, right, we know that the maximum force equals to three times the weight. But the dependence on time is quadratic in time. So this is kind of what it looks like. Up until, right, that last link hits it, and then what? And then it's simply equal to the weight of the chain, right? So this force of the scale looks like this. This maximum right here uh, should be three times mg. The steady state after a long time, once the chain has completely fallen onto the scale, this here simply has to be equal to mg. Uh, but this dependence right here, this guy here should be proportional to t squared, which is what we have over here. Okay, so you get this kind of parabolic dependence with time, and then eventually, once the entire chain is at rest on the scale, it just becomes steady state. All right, kind of a nice problem. All right, thanks for watching.